Hey everyone, how's it going? So it's funny, we have done 32 episodes of the Red and Blue series, and yet, we have, before today, never done a fighting Pokemon. I know, it's bizarre. There's not a ton of fighting Pokemon, to be fair, in Generation 1. I mean, in terms of pre-evolved forms, we could either use Machop or Mankey. I figured Mankey would be easier because it has slightly better attack and much better speed. And typically for solo runs, that's beneficial. But unlike Machop, it does have a pretty significant downside in that it really doesn't get a decent fighting move. I mean, there aren't really any decent fighting moves in Generation 1, but at least Machop gets low kick. Mankey gets low kick only in yellow version. And it does at level 9, which would have been super, super useful for Brock. Unfortunately, that is not the way it works in Red and Blue, so we're stuck with normal moves for the foreseeable future. And that sucks. And defeating Brock was actually really, really tricky. Not because Mankey has bad attack, obviously its attack is pretty good, but because it has pretty terrible defense. Thankfully, to make up for that, we do get one of the best moves in Generation 1 for certain Pokemon, including Mankey, and that's Karate Chop. Now, Generation 1's critical hit system is completely broken. And unlike some of the other things that are broken, this one was by design. Basically, your critical hit ratio is based on your base speed, and the formula is base speed over 512. So Mankey has roughly a 14% critical hit ratio, but when it comes to increased critical hit moves like Karate Chop, that number goes over 64. And 70 over 64 is over 1, meaning, aside from the 1 in 256 glitch, which also affects critical hits by the way, and did happen a few times in this run, Mankey will always, almost, get a critical hit with Karate Chop. And that has its pros and cons. Mankey's only status move it gets is Leer, and Leer could be useful in lowering defense, and in later generations, combining that with a critical hit would be massive. Unfortunately for longtime viewers, you know that in Generation 1, critical hits also ignore debuffs like Leer, so it's either use Leer and Scratch, or Karate Chop, and Leer really doesn't do anything. Against Geodude, Karate Chop is super great, because Geodude likes to spam Defense Curl, so to defeat it, we needed to spam Defense Curl as much as possible, then we make it to Onyx with 29 health, and basically we just need good luck. Onyx has Tackle, Screech, and Bide. We need Screech or Bide. When it uses Bide, we can use Leer. Eventually, we'll switch to Scratch, because it'll do way more damage, even with the critical hit. And yeah, it just kind of comes down to, do you get decent move luck from Onyx? Not the best strategy, but to be perfectly fair, having a Pokemon with just normal moves, taking down Brock at level 15, is actually insanely good. And this bodes extremely well for Mankey for the rest of the run. The next challenge is Misty or Rival 2, both of which look to be a problem. Misty, probably even more of a problem with Bubble Beam and High Special, our special is terrible. So, like always, when there's a choice, we're gonna go battle Rival 2. Unfortunately, with my current level in attack, Pidgeotto is a 3-hit KO and we don't want Sand Attack. So that kind of stinks, but it's not the end of the world. Both Abra and Rattata are 1-hit KOs and we should outspeed. And so now, the only question really is, how much are we gonna miss? Well, the answer is a ton against Charmander. Thankfully, we get really good luck at the end of the battle where Charmander could have knocked me out easily, but just doesn't attack. It's barely a 2-hit KO. Had it been a 1-hit KO, obviously this battle would be even easier than it was, but a first try victory nonetheless. Another instance of Karate Chop simply being super overpowered. And because I didn't mention it before, it is essentially a base 100 power move that ignores buffs in the beginning of the game. That's insane. Speaking of which, we're going to get another base 100 power move pretty soon in Dig. But before I do that, I'm going to see if I can take on Misty and possibly defeat her. Like always, she leads off with Staryu. I'm hoping for one AKO. It wasn't, but X Defend is perfect. So there goes Staryu, but Star Me was always the concern. I was hoping to outspeed, but I don't. Critical hit is not great, but thankfully that wasn't Bubble Beam. Sorry, check that. It wasn't even a critical hit. That's just how much Water Gun did. So... Yeah, this is going to be a pretty scary battle. It's going to be a 3 KO. Another critical hit isn't ideal, but thankfully it goes for Tackle. Had it gone for literally anything else, I would have lost. 
But another first try victory, so Mankey is absolutely cruising. We can go pick up Dig, which will be super useful against Lieutenant Surge. And we can also pick up Body Slam, but fun fact, I barely ended up using it. There are instances where it makes sense, but Karate Chop Critical Hit, pretty much almost always the better move. Speaking of which, we just are going to spam it against Rival 3. I could have easily lost. None of his Pokemon were 1 KOs except for Kadabra, who I'm going to actually end up outspeeding, which is pretty nice. And against Charmeleon, I should have gone for Dig. Had it gone for Ember, I think I would have lost. So very, very reckless, unnecessary, but win is a win is a win. Haven't lost in quite a long time. So let's see if that continues versus Lieutenant Surge. This time I'm going to play it safe and just go for Dig against each one of his Pokemon. I outspeed Voltorb, it does go for X speed which will waste a little bit of time, but I knock it out in one turn. The exact same thing will happen with Pikachu, literally he also uses X speed. And now the question is, do I outspeed Raichu? I don't, and thankfully that Growl failed, 1 in 4 chance of that happening. I then Dig and hope it's going to be a 1 KO and critical hit, okay, so the luck has been pretty decent. Nothing extraordinary to be perfectly honest, but good enough. I think it would have been a one KO either way, so you're not going to see me complain. And we have all three of the gym badges. That's pretty optimal. And after using Dig to get back to Cerulean City, we are going to go through Rock Tunnel. There, of course, is that hiker with the two Geodudes and the Graveler. And I don't quite get what happened here, to be perfectly honest with you. So I go for Dig, and I don't want to KO the Geodude. It goes for Self-Destruct, and I barely survive on 13 HP. Then I go for Dig and the second Geodude self-destructs while I'm underground. So now I need to 1 KO the Graveler or not get hit by anything, and somehow I do, without a critical hit. How the heck does that work? Oh, don't ask me, but funny enough, the Slowpoke were actually way more problematic than this Hiker was. And that doesn't bode well because we're going to be facing a ton of Psychic Pokemon, like the rivals Alakazam and Sabrina, coming up, but that's not for a little while. In the meantime, we're going to go to Celadon, and we're going to try to battle Giovanni first. I actually do end up beating Giovanni, but it probably would have been optimal to go to the Mart first, so I could have bought TM17, which is Submission, Mankey's only fighting move that it will learn. It's base 80 power, but it has two significant drawbacks. One, probably the biggest one, is its 20% chance it misses, only 80% accuracy, and on top of that, it deals recoil damage, so it really is kind of an awful move. But without it, Kangaskhan is a bit of a lottery. With it, Kangaskhan is nearly a 1 KO. Had I used a rare candy, it probably would have been. Whatever. And we end up knocking out the Kangaskhan the next turn. So, yeah, Giovanni really isn't too big a deal with the fighting Pokemon. Since I already ended up doing the errands, and yes, I went back and forth wasting a bit of time... I'm going to go battle Rival 4, who really shouldn't be too problematic, because I was able to pick up another useful move. I haven't really showed it off in many solo runs, because not a lot of Pokemon can actually learn it, but when they can, it's super helpful. And as you can see, that move is Rock Slide, which easily dispatches of Pidgeotto. Execute wasn't a 1-hit KO with Karate Chop, still a problem, nothing really good to use against it. Gyarados is next. Didn't think Rock Slide would 1-hit KO, but it did, that's super great. We easily outspeed Kadabra, it's way underleveled at this point, and we knock it out. And you're probably wondering why I picked Charmeleon, and I should address this now because it's pretty easy to defeat. I could have used either Dig or Rock Slide. But essentially, since Charizard is a flying type, even though it doesn't learn flying moves and Gyarados is a flying type, I figured that would be the toughest matchup for a fighting Pokemon. Upon looking back, perhaps it would have been Blastoise with its higher defense, that would have meant that the final battle would have had Executor and Arcanine. I don't know. I mean, Arcanine could have been a little problematic. I think Dig would have won it KO'd. It's, it's a tough call, honestly. Trying to pick the best starter for the rival is sometimes difficult. I do think Rockside will be less great against Gyarados going forward, but I don't know. Maybe it was the wrong call. But at the end of the day, I did pick the Pokemon that is super effective by type against Mankey. So yeah, I'm going to say it was fine. Whatever. Anyway, this is where the run actually becomes difficult. After we get through Pokemon Tower, because there really isn't anywhere great to go. Erika is defeatable with incredible luck, but Razorleaf will one-shot Mankey. 
and the only way you can win is if you either get a critical hit or a miss or it goes for like sleep powder and misses so that's not great i did defeat erica and then reset because you know i just didn't feel like that was the best call koga is not necessarily going to be a problem but don't forget in koga's gym are a bunch of drowsy and kadabra well at least the first trainer has that and guess what they know confusion and i have low special and i'm a fighting pokemon so yeah that didn't really work either and Rival Fievel is super overleveled for me at this point in the game. So that didn't work either. So for the first time in a really long time, I had to essentially just go and level up. And the first place I'll go to level up are gyms, because once you defeat the gym leader, you can't fight the trainers anymore. If you need to fight the overworld trainers at some point later in the run, and I've done that many times, you can always backtrack and battle them, but for gym trainers, you only have one chance. And so I battled all the trainers in Erica's gym who are incredibly easy. And I also have five rare candies at this point in the game. And after all that, I'm going to end up at level 45. And that was pretty specific because I need the drowsy, Kadabra, etc. Well, the Kadabra always was, but I need the drowsy to be one at KOs. And finally at this level, they are. So I can get past the first juggler. And once you're past him, you have a pretty decent chance against the second juggler since he does like to switch Pokemon pretty frequently. So yeah, you can lose, but it's just two Pokemon and getting through them isn't too bad. And so now with Dig, I'm thinking Koga should be fine. I did actually lose my first time, but it was to ridiculous randomness. Um, Coughing is a one a KO even without a crit. Muck is a range and in my first battle used Minimize and just stalled me until it knocked me out, which was awful. In this case, I get the range and knock it out in one hit, so that was pretty good luck. As I said, coughing is a one a KO without a crit, and wheezing, had it used self-destruct while I was underground, it would have been nice. It doesn't, but thankfully, it also doesn't use self-destruct when I resurface. But yeah, Koga wasn't too bad. Having Dig, I mean, we don't get Earthquake, unfortunately, but Dig is the same base power, just takes an extra turn. And so that's four gym badges. Now, whether to go to Erica or Rival Fievel, I had to sort of think about it. In the end, I decided to battle Erica, and it was kind of a mistake. Basically, Karate Chop needed to win a KO Victory Bell, I thought, but it did just miss. However, Erica used a Super Potion, and after that, it was pretty much a guaranteed victory. Didn't think Tangela would be a 1 KO, but in red and blue, it really doesn't have anything to damage me or do very much of anything. So I was fine with that. And Vile Plume, thankfully, doesn't have a guaranteed critical hit move like Razor Leaf. So unless it put me to sleep, which thankfully didn't, went for Mega Drain, you can see how little that did. I'm able to easily defeat Erica, and that is Gym Badge number 5. And while I could battle Blaine here, I do think Rival Fievel will be slightly easier. So I'm going to go do that next. Now I really want Rock Slide to 1 KO Pidgeot and again just miss. Wing Attack does almost half my HP, so probably I'm going to need to reset, but might as well continue. Next comes out Execute. I did want to see Reflect because Critical Hits ignore that. So it's a 2 KO, that's very good. I doubt Gyarados will be a 1 KO. Also very close. Dragon Rage actually kind of works, but... Now I can't get hit by anything else, and Alakazam should outspeed me. And never mind, I outspeed it. That's pretty good, and we should win. 10% chance now we lose if we miss this rock slide. And we don't, so it was close. But we were able to get past Rival Fievel fairly easily. Yes, we are at a much higher level than we normally are. But that's just how it goes sometimes. So anyway, not much to talk about. Giovanni's pretty easy with Dig and Submission and whatever. So we're going to go and skip ahead all the way to the 7th gym leader, or in our case, the 6th, Blaine. Obviously, Sabrina is pretty scary with psychic Pokemon, so battling Blaine first just makes total sense. I'm not going to mess around here. I'm going to go for Dig, and it should, yes, it does, want to KO Growlithe. It should also want to KO Ponyta, and thankfully, I've outsped both Pokemon. Now, will I outspeed Rapidash? I do, and... I do. Very good. We're 3 for 3. Now we just need to 1-KO our canine. And... Ooh, we just missed. Please don't use Fire Blast. No! 
Oh my goodness. Thankfully, burn doesn't hit until after I attack. And Karate Chop will crit and knock it out. Wow, that was really, 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 really close. And it doesn't bode well for Sabrina, but... Hey, we do get a slight special boost from beating Blaine, and there is literally no other mandatory trainers to battle, so... Yeah, let's see how long I have to spend on this. Alright, so it should start out easy. We outspeed, when a KO Karate Chop. Okay. Mr. Mom, I don't know if I will. Alright. Okay, we do. That's very good. And Rock Slide should easily one it KO Venomoth. It does, and now we actually just need some decent luck out of Alakazam. I assume... Oh, I outspeed! Wow, we won... Oh! Well, that stinks, and now we're gonna... Oh, we win! Okay, used Reflect. That was pretty lucky. How to use Psybeam, or I think it has Psychic. Doesn't really matter. It would have knocked me out, but... Reflect is perfectly fine, and that is Sabrina! I am stunned that was a first try victory, and I think we we'll really see why Mankey's speed is so important. Machop won't have the speed to outspeed Alakazam at this level, so that's going to be pretty annoying, but hey, that's a problem for future Jaros. Current Jaros still has a couple more trainers to go. I mean, in terms of non-named trainers, that's literally correct. There are two more mandatory trainers in Giovanni's gym. We don't really care about them. Let's battle Giovanni. I've really not spent much time on his battles, and we'll see just why here. So I'm going to go for Dig against Rhyhorn. I think it'll want to KO, and I don't know. Critical hit. Who cares? That's one down. Now, I don't think... Oh, okay, I outspeed, and this should want it. Aww. No! That was literally the worst thing. Growl. So now, I probably won't want to KO anything with Dig. That's wonderful. All right, so Nido Queen. You know what? Half damage means I wasn't going to knock it out in one hit anyway. Guard spec works fine for me, and that is three down, is it? Yep. Now we have to deal with Nido King. It's obviously not going to be one to KO unless I crit, which I don't. Thrash does pretty decent damage, about a third, but I should have more than enough HP for Rhydon, and I could use Submission if I really wanted to. Well, let's go for Dig, and okay, that's not doing nearly enough. Let's go for Submission just in case, and oh, well, critical hit works for me. Honestly, all things considered, this has gone kind of well, but I think what will make or break this run is how Mankey does with the final six. I mean, I know I say that a lot, but Mankey could have an easy enough time with the next trainers due to its nice move pool and good speed, but I also foresee some potential issues up ahead, so I'm not really sure how this is going to go. And our first obstacle is Rival 6. Now, Rival 6 is pretty similar to Rival 5 except now Pidgeot has agility, so it will spam either agility or wing attack because both are classified as super effective. I want agility, obviously I don't get that, and wing attack does pretty significant damage. It takes two hits to knock out Pidgeot. Rhyhorn isn't really a problem, so I'm just going to quickly knock it out. But perhaps the most annoying Pokemon is Execute. It does no Stun Spore, that's what I was about to say. And that will pretty much end my chances at a victory, I think. Especially now that Gyarados will outspeed, and thankfully it goes for Leer. Rock Slide is only doing about half, so it's going to be a 2 hit KO. And Hydro Pump by... Oh, okay, it missed. So, we're still in this, for now. Alright, Alakazam outspeeds and goes for Reflect. Karate Chop does decent damage, and... Oh, I might actually knock it out. No, of course, I stay paralyzed. Psybeam, let's, uh, yeah. Alright, so, that's not gonna work. I actually have a bit of an idea. Submission is a TM move that we can buy at any time. So, actually, it's also available in Victory Road, but... The point is, we can teach Mimic, Mimic Agility, which would negate, well, mostly the effects of Paralysis, and redo the same battle, plus the Badge Boost glitch, yes, I know, everyone's favorite, will activate and will increase my attack, although, that wouldn't help for Karate Chop because we're getting critical hits. I do think that makes sense, I mean, I don't really use Submission in this battle anyway, but setting up Mimics leads to a brand new problem, that Pidgeot has many more opportunities to use Wing Attack. So I'm probably going to need a little bit of luck. And there is still a chance Execute will use Stun Spore. And in fact, I found out it is not a guaranteed 2 hit KO with Karate Chop. So that's a little annoying. Perhaps I want to level up just a tiny bit more. But the bigger problem I figure out, I believe it's the next battle. 
but I end up making it all the way to Alakazam without any Mimic setup, just to see if perhaps the earlier strategy could have potentially worked had I not been paralyzed, but no, Alakazam will outspeed, and Psybeam, not even Psychic, is a 1 KO. So the agilities are indeed mandatory, as I suspected, and we're going to need a little bit of luck and some better strategy. So I'm going to skip another lost battle. We'll talk about it in a second, but I've already told you what I'm going to do here. I'm going to set up agility, and I'm going to hope that Pidgeot doesn't attack me too much. It takes four turns, one to mimic agility, and then ideally I'd like to get up all three agilities to get not just speed, but maximum attack. Every agility I use buffs my attack by another 12%. And as you can see, that is pretty significant. Thankfully, Pidgeot does cooperate. I'm at 78 health, and Rock Slide is a 1 KO, so that's very good. Rhyhorn is still not much of an issue, so we can just use Dig and quickly dispatch of it. But now the issue is Execute. Will we get a decent move from it? Rock Slide guarantees that it'll be a 2 KO because of the buffs from the badge boost, and we get Solar Beam, which is a 2 turn attack, so that's pretty good. Gyarados just misses being a 1 KO, which really stinks. Bite is fine. We don't have a lot of HP, but the truth of the matter is, so long as we one-shot the next two Pokemon, which is entirely possible, that really doesn't matter. And this is where we need some decent Alakazam luck. The only move that will one-hit KO with even the badge boost is Dig. Rock Slide just misses, and that's why I was afraid to use Dig in the battle I lost previously. I went for Rock Slide because I didn't want to see Reflect, and of course, I see Reflect. Thankfully, it goes for Reflect again, and I can go for Karate Chop. Had it gone for Psybeam as I emerged from Dig, that would have obviously knocked me out. And now I just need Rock Slide to hit, which it does, and Charizard is no problem. So, that is rival number six and it didn't go super poorly but it also didn't go super well either and so i am concerned going into the elite four that we're just not going to be doing enough damage especially when we get to Lorelei's second pokemon cloister and uh yeah there's no point rambling anymore let's see what that looked like dugong i knew wasn't gonna be an issue because Lorelei has good ai and good AI basically means, I've hinted to it earlier, it will always use super effective moves, even if they don't actually do damage. Psychic equals super effective against fighting, so Dugong will just continuously spam rest, and thankfully it is just two rock slides to knock out Dugong, but now it probably will take more. Cloyster has, I think, the best base defense in all of Generation 1, so that's going to be an issue. Rock Slide does decent damage, about a third. Aurora Beam, though, is doing half, so another one would knock me out. Thankfully, it decides to go for Supersonic, and I'm able to knock it out with a third Rock Slide, but that is not ideal. Next, I go to Mimic Amnesia, both for Badge Boost Glitch and to lessen the chance that Lorelei's moves knock me out. So, after I do that, I'm able to knock out Slowbro. Jinx, I'm hoping Rock Slide will want to KO, and it does. Unfortunately, it doesn't come anywhere close to one KOing Lapras. It ends up going for Blizzard, and after a miss, it goes for Body Slam, and there goes the battle. And after one more failed attempt, that was enough for me to realize, listen, Mankey, you're great, but needs to level up. Yes, I could theoretically have Submission, and that would make Cloyster probably a little bit more consistent. However, remember... 20% chance that misses, and recoil damage. I wasn't sure if that was worth it, and frankly, leveling up may be helpful not just against Lorelei, but also Agatha, because if we can outspeed all of Agatha's Gengars, the Agatha lottery becomes the Agatha, I don't know, dividend or something. I don't know, something reliable, whatever, you know what I'm talking about. But I go back into Victory Road, and even there, Mankey started to struggle, which was a bad sign. I do have five more rare candies. There are, I believe, 12 in Generation 1, two of which you'll probably never get, one of which I can get in the power plant, but no real point to do so. So I can level up and use those five rare candies before Lorelei, and I would probably have a much easier fight against her. It's always a question when to use those rare candies, but I think at the beginning makes sense. So in the end, I level up 5 levels via the battles, and then 5 more via the rare candies, so I'm at level 63. 
Pretty significant, 10 levels. Let's see what that makes our new battle look like. Dugong is seemingly unchanged. I go for Karate Chop, it goes for Rest. I go for Rock Slide, it does about three quarters, which doesn't matter, still to a KO. And now I can just knock it out with a Karate Chop. So even Dugong is more consistent. That's pretty good. The big question is Cloyster. Didn't like how much Aurora Beam was doing. I go for Rock Slide. That's perfect. I wanted to see about half. It goes for Clamp, and wow! Okay, all right, Cloyster. Yeah, sure, that was that was wonderful. Hopefully I knock it out. I, I do, but man, oh man, I really need to 1 KO everything left. Thankfully, Slowbro also has good AI. It will just spam Amnesia, and I was being really silly. Rather than mimic Amnesia, I don't have any special attacks. I should mimic Withdraw. I know it seems silly, but six badge boosts versus three badge boosts it's going to make a difference. I mean, literally double. Slowbro takes a while to knock out, but it won't attack, like I said, so we can take as much time as we need. Now we have to deal with Jinx. I would like to use Karate Chop because it's more consistently accurate, but of course, crits ignore buff, so I have to use it, and of course I miss. Thankfully, it goes for Thrash, and of course, it gets a critical hit. Well, that's just fantastic. So, let's try this again. Don't really have much to say about the Dugong, except this time I don't miss. Still loving that damage versus Cloyster. Aurora Beam, don't lower my attack, very good. And wow, okay, so it looks like there is still a chance I don't two-shot Cloyster. Thankfully, put it within range for healing, and I'm able to knock it out on the very next turn. Or not, because I miss with Rock Slide again. Thankfully, she misses with Supersonic. Great! That's just another little inconsistency that can pop up. Slowbro, I'm going to speed right on past, because we've already talked about what we do, why we do it, and how Slowbro will only use Amnesia. So now we get to face our arch-rival, Jinx. 10% chance to miss, this time we don't, and obviously it's going to be a 1 KO. But now I need to know if Lapras is. We have a lot more HP this time, so we do have a bit of a buffer. And, of course, we miss with Rock Slide. Why wouldn't we? Blizzard hits, well, alright, we survive, and we're not frozen, and Rock Slide knocks it out. Very, very, very annoying. And, uh, do you want to know something hilarious? Bruno isn't such a guaranteed victory against Mankey. Because Bruno's Pokemon all have bad special and decent enough attack, except for the Onyxes. The issue is, and hopefully it won't happen here, we could be hit with like Mega Punch, Mega Kick, or Submission, and Mankey is so frail it could be knocked out. Let's see. First things first, does Dig want a KO? It doesn't. That's not the end of the world because Onyx can't really do anything, but it's not ideal. And now I have to worry about Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee, both of which can do significant damage. I feel my best bet is just to go for Karate Chop, so I do. It's going to be a 2 KO. X Defend is not going to matter, so that was good. Him on Lee's defense isn't quite as good, so Karate Chop does about 3 quarters. And yeah, that was what I was worried about. Had that critted, I would have lost to Bruno, genuinely, which is awful. But yeah, this is a bad matchup, shockingly. But it really is. We don't really need to worry about the second Onyx. I just need to be able to knock it out quickly enough. But now, even though it's a 1 in 4 chance, Machamp can use Submission, and if it does, we lose. Alright, so Karate Chop, a third. So 3 at KO. Fissure doesn't do anything because I outspeed. Another Karate Chop. Obviously, I can't double crit. X Defense. So, okay, 3 at KO. I, I didn't actually know if it would. That is pretty scary, but it's hilarious that normally it's Agatha and Lance that I'm worried about, and I'm actually thinking they both could be the easiest. <laughs> However, there's a big if there. I need Mankey to outspeed every single Pokemon. It's possible. It is possible. And if it happens, Agatha will be free. But there's only one way to find out. Let's see. So, okay, we outspeed the first Gengar. That is amazing. It means we'll outspeed every other Pokemon, guaranteed, but the second Gengar. 
And of course, Dig is going to want to KO. Golbat's the only thing I don't know if it'll be a 1 KO, and, well, Critical Hit doesn't tell me that, but it is good, so I will definitely take it. Now we have two free KOs, one against the Haunter, which obviously we're going to outspeed, and another free 1 KO against Arbok, and now the battle comes down to, do we outspeed the level 60 Gengar? We do, and we will obviously, obviously, 1 KO with Dig, Agatha, free. Wow, I, I never thought, you know, very few times can I actually say that. It's so weird where Bruno is a concern and Agatha isn't. But notice that I said both these next two battles could be easy because Lance versus certain types of Pokemon just breaks. And this is a very unfortunate thing. And is why I actually thought of doing this challenge series in yellow version, because it's less bad there. But rather than talk abstractly, let me show you what I mean. The first Pokemon is normal, Gyarados. I'm hoping that Rockside will want to KO. It does not. Gyarados goes for Dragon Rage, and I think I just won the battle. And some of you might realize why. For those of you who don't, it is the same issue with Dugong and Rest. Lance's Pokemon, both Dragonair and Dragonite, no psychic moves. In Dragonair's case, it's agility, which I will mimic and use to speed up, because the only Pokemon that is potentially, actually without agility, it really would be kind of scary is Aerodactyl, because it probably would outspeed me. And the other Pokemon literally can't attack. They have no moves they will use other than agility, or in Dragonite's case, barrier. So all I need to do is set up three agilities, I don't even need to be a 1 KO, but Dig actually does 1 KO, which is good for time. And yeah, now I just need Rock Slide to be a 1 KO. It's super effective, and Aerodactyl doesn't have great defense. And it is, in fact, a 1 KO. So yeah, the battle is over. Now, I really want Dragonite to use Agility and not Barrier. Of course, it goes for Barrier. Uh, that's okay. It means Lance could potentially heal. I'm going to go for Karate Chop. But yeah, we just basically have to be patient. Eventually, Dragonite will faint, and we have made it to the champion. Seriously, the trainer I think is least consistent is Bruno, but that's not including the champion. We had trouble against Rival 6. The final battle is even better. I don't know how this is going to go. I have ideas of what I want to do, but I don't know if it will work. I say this a bunch. There's only one way to find out. Let's do it. Alright, so Pidgeot no longer has agility, so it'll either go for Wing Attack or Sky Attack. Rock Slide does not want to KO. I wasn't really expecting it to. Wing Attack isn't as good, because obviously, it actually does damage the turn it's used. Unlike Sky Attack, where I'd knock out Pidgeot. So, that's a blow, but not a big deal. 100 HP, or just under that. You know what? This is going to be close, like I suspected. Truth is, the scariest Pokemon is Alakazam. We need to 1 a KO, or it's going to use a Psychic move and knock me out. We saw what happened last time, so I'm just going to see how much Karate Chop does. There's really not much of a risk, and a lot, but it uses Reflect. That's what I guessed it would use. I had a 1 in 3 chance. The odds were not in my favor, but thankfully we got the RNG we needed. So I think this should be it, but who knows? That is the scariest Pokemon. There's still four more to go. Rhydon has much better defense than Rhyhorn. We're going to go for Dig. We're not going to mess around here. And wow, that was a critical hit. So it's probably a three hit KO without that. And wow, it used Fury Attack. That's like the only attacking move I don't want to see. Thankfully, it only hits twice. We knock out Rhydon. Three down. That's halfway. But... Executor is pretty scary because it can put you to sleep, and for whatever reason, it will attack afterwards. I go for Karate Chop, and ooh, that's bad, and uh, that's worse. And yeah, I think we oh, we woke up turn one. Okay, it goes for Barrage, which while waste time is technically better than Stomp, you can see how bad my defense is. Each hit of Barrage does 10 HP, so a single Stomp could knock me out. I'm going to go for Karate Chop. Why the heck not? Executor goes for Hypnosis and misses. So we're going to make it all the way to Gyarados. But unless I get a critical hit here, I think the battle might be over. All right. 17% chance. Nope. 
And <laughs> okay. I don't think I would have tanked that on 100 HP, let alone, well, less than half of that. So, yeah, this is not going to work. And I have two options. Both are kind of not amazing. I could either level up even more, but realistically, I don't see how much of a difference that would make. Because we're not even close for Gyarados being a 1 at KO. The other option I'm thinking of is that we mimic Hypnosis from Executor and just spam it against Executor and Gyarados and hope we get some decent accuracy luck. You might be wondering, j -Rose, why aren't you getting flinches with Rock Slide? Doesn't flinch until Gen 2. I didn't know either. I always assumed it did, but nope. In Gen 1, a lot of moves like Tri-Attack and Rock Slide do not have added effects, so that's wonderful. Anyway, in epic foreshadowing, the run you are watching does end with a Bruno loss, which I always like showing off. As I mentioned earlier, if I got hit with Submission, I would lose, and look at that! Submission knocks me out, so we have a really hilarious situation where Lorelei is mostly consistent, Bruno is pretty inconsistent, and then Agatha and Lance are free, essentially. So, that is absolutely insane. I have done now, I think, 32 of these runs, including Fully Evolved Pokemon, and I have never quite had such a Pokemon where once I've made it past Bruno, I am guaranteed, essentially, to make it to the champion. I just, it's, it's funny every time I beat Bruno because it's such a non-thing in every run, but here it's like, wow, we actually made it past Bruno. I, I can relax and think about what the final battle is going to be like. And there's obviously one other issue that didn't come up the last time that probably could have. And I mean, I'm going to show you. Obviously, Pidgeot could have used Sky Attack. That would have been nice. It, it doesn't here either. But the issue is Alakazam could easily go for Psybeam. And uh, it's practically, I think it's a 1 KO even at full HP. So in order to win, not only do I need to beat Loralee and Bruno and not get some bad luck. Although truth be told, Loralee or Lorelei, I I'm sorry. Okay, I have made a consistent effort in this video to call her Lorelei. And I'm not going to edit out those mistakes because the reason I call her Loralee is I've been calling her that for over 20 years. Well, actually, I think just about 20 years. And it is a very hard habit to break. And when I try, and I have tried to pronounce Pokemon's names correctly, I will go in and out to when I'm thinking about it versus when it's just subconscious and I just think, oh, her name is Loralee. But like so many people in the Pokemon community have asked me to call her Lorelei. So I'm going to Laura try. Ah, ah. But I, I will not always Laura succeed. Anyway. Uh, this Bruno battle, I mean, it goes better, I guess. Every Bruno battle is kind of just, I hope I don't lose randomly. And, uh, you know, there's not really much I can do aside from leveling up. And here's the thing with leveling up. I don't mind if I'm a level or two away from getting a range or something. When it's like 15 levels, I would rather try a bit more of a, I don't know, unorthodox strategy, especially when I have Mimic. And this is a good time to mention, I never found a good use for Submission. I thought about using it, like, maybe against Rhydon, but certainly wouldn't help against Executor or Gyarados. And then I wouldn't have access to Mimic, so it's kind of funny that Mankey's going to be one of those Pokemon that doesn't really use moves of its type. But alright, we've made it back to the champion. We are over 2, but I am going to try and utilize my Hypnosis strategy. Will it work? I don't know, let's see. For the third time, we get pretty much identical Pidgeot luck. No critical hit on my end, and no Sky Attack, or thankfully no critical hit, on the rival's end. So that's one down at around 100 HP. Now we have to get good Alakazam luck. In the Victorious Rival 6 battle, Dig was what I needed, so I'm going to go for that, and I get Reflect. Of course, of course, the time I don't want Reflect, that is what I get. Perfect. And uh, now I lose. Okay, it went for Reflect again. <laughs> All right, well, whatever. So I'm just going to go for Karate Chop. No need to use Dig, and that is two down. 
So now I can at least try to see how the hypnosis strategy works. At least if I can make it past Rhydon, which isn't actually guaranteed. But something really weird happens that I don't quite understand. So I go for Dig. Thankfully, it goes for something like Tail Whip. The important thing is how much damage... Like, what? I got a critical hit. And it missed knocking it out, but that attack did way over half. What happened? Did I just get the absolute lowest range on the critical hit and the absolute highest range? I really don't understand what I just saw, but hey, I'm not going to complain. I have 100 HP. Actually, it really doesn't matter. But, you know, that's still kind of good. It, it matters for Executor, actually. Now we can withstand more barrages and stomps. I've never said that before in a video. But first things first, we're going to mimic hypnosis. It's going to use, and of course it hits. All right, can we wake up turn one? We don't. That's not surprising. It goes for Barrage, that's better than Stomp. Two, three, okay, so we're at 67 HP. Hey, the HP really did matter. All right, of course we're staying asleep, why wouldn't we? And we're probably gonna get, oh, we get another Barrage and it misses. Thankfully, Barrage has a chance to miss, that's hilarious. Now we wake up, that's great, and even a five turn Barrage won't knock me out unless it crits. Thankfully it doesn't, you can actually tell after the first hit if a multi-turn hit crits, so we're at 47 HP. Now we need Hypnosis to hit. This isn't looking good. But you know what? It hit, so it's looking okay. All right, I'm putting my odds back to possible. Now it's a three KO, so I need this thing to stay asleep. All right, attack one. It stayed asleep. That's really all I need because even if it wakes up here, which it did, it can't attack the turn it wakes up. Yay, Gen 1 mechanics. So now all I need is the 60% chance to put Gyarados to sleep. And I think I won. All right, go coin flip. Hooray! The slightly better than coin flip flipped in my favor. And I don't know what I was talking about. I'm going to miss with Rock Slide and lose that way. That is what's going to happen. And I mean, thankfully, it didn't wake up first turn. That's pretty good. We hit with Rock Slide. That's very good. Please don't wake up. That's great. Because now if I miss, I will at least get another opportunity. And <laughs> yes, okay. Um, now we have a 90% chance to win, because Charizard definitely will not tank a Rock Slide, so it's all up to this. 90% accurate move versus Charizard. Will we be champion? Oh yeah, <laughs> okay. This was such a unique run. I mean, it was my first fighting type run. But this is really the first run where I solely relied on physical moves. Until Generation 3, you really don't have to specialize. So having a mixed attacker makes a lot of sense. Special moves are just so powerful. But the question you're wondering at this point is, how well does Mankey do? Well, this is the third best time I've ever gotten with a pre-evolved Pokemon. And it's actually just three minutes slower than Slowpoke at a significantly lower level. So while I will often defer to in-game time, three minutes in a run like this is well within the margin of error, so time is essentially equal, and Mankey was able to do it at a lower level. It well deserved the number three spot of pre-evolved Pokemon. We have still 32 more pre-evolved Pokemon and a bunch of fully evolved Pokemon, or ones that don't evolve left to go. We're gonna end up doing all of them probably because you guys seem to like these videos. And I've been talking long enough, so have a great day, thanks for watching, take care.